Hello and welcome to the second video in the My First Variable video series. This one is a continuation of the basics and we're going to look at the types of token or types of variable inside of Figma. There are basically three different types that we see. There is a primitive type, a semantic type and a component level type. If this is brand new, don't worry, you'll start to get used to this terminology as we go along. The first one, primitive, I'm just going to zoom in over here, is effectively what the value looks like. If we're thinking about colors, that might be something like red 100, red 200, or red 300. These numbers here, the 100, 200, 300, typically represent a level of detail in its darkness. So the higher the number, the darker the color. The alternative names for this are typically things like base tokens or global tokens or even atomic tokens. We prefer the word primitive, so I advise you to stick to that one. If we take an example of this, if I just draw a rectangle on the canvas here and create a red, you can see you've got a quite a light red here. This might be, for example, the 100. If I then make another shape and go up in the darkness, this might therefore be 200 and we go down to 300, etc., etc. This is typically how people build color palettes with the first number being the lightest and the last one being the darkest. The next type of variable is the semantic level. And this is where we start to be a bit more descriptive. Typically, this is where we name something based off its intention. So where we've got red 100 here, that doesn't really tell us what to do with it or where it should go. What this might mean is that BG danger or background danger is what we use for this red here. So any component or screen that we're making, we might actually want to use the variable called BG danger. That means that if we decide that BG danger should eventually actually be maybe more like an orange, we can definitely do that. And we won't be interfering with what it looks like. So it might look orange, but it still has the name BG danger. That means we can alias from red to BG danger from to orange to BG danger. That means that BG danger stays BG danger. It doesn't matter what it actually looks like. As you can imagine, this creates a much richer design system experience. The last level is the component level. This is where we get one level deeper and is actually optional. We don't see many teams needing to use this, but it's worth understanding whether it is possible or not. So the red example, or now orange, is an example of a component for a button. We might have a danger button and therefore create a background specifically for that danger button. That button danger might take a red, it might take an orange, it might take a yellow, but we just search for that name when we're applying it to our components. So the three levels, primitive, semantic, and component. The same thing works for sizes. So we have the same three levels, basically in every single variable type. Primitive for a size might be something like size four, where it's basically like a four pixel or four no value. The semantic version might be something like padding medium, and the component level might be something like radio height. I've got an example of a very poorly designed button down here, which I'm going to now apply some variables to. The variables in my file live in the top right hand side of the screen in the local variables panel. When I open this up, you can see that I have some reds. These match those reds that we set up before, red 100, 200, 300. These can be applied to my selection, selecting my frame, close down the panel, open up the fill panel, and I could apply those from here. I've actually de-scoped these, which means they're not possible or not visible. And we'll come to that in a later lesson. What I can see is my semantic color and my component color. If I open that panel back up, in the top left of this, we get all of our collections. So remember in the previous lesson where we spoke about collections being a basically a group or a bucket where we put all similar variables inside. I'm currently inside the primitive color collection where we just have the names based off what they look like. If I jump to my semantic color where we describe the intention, you can see I've got the BG danger in here. This is being aliased from red 300. If I change this to red 100, that would change it to be a lighter color and BG danger would change. So back to our example where we had the orange and the red. If I had an orange option, I could do that. Let's go to primitive color, create a new color. 
and call this orange 100, select it from my picker, like so, jump back to my semantic color and change to the orange 100. That has now changed BG danger. My selection on the canvas, if I now pick BG danger, you can see it's picked up that orange or the yellow, the yellow orange in this case. And if I change that alias to red 100, you can see that is changing on the canvas too. So we've got the relationship. We have the primitive color collection and the semantic color collection. We alias or pick the other variable from the primitives into my danger selection here. You would have noticed as well in the collections, we have component collection. This is that deeper level that I mentioned before, which is optional, but you can see we have the BG button danger surfacing in here. If I select that, you'll see it's actually using the darker red 300 on the canvas. As well as color, we also have sizes. So I mentioned before, we have primitives and semantics for sizes too. The primitive sizes are basically what the number represents. So size zero is zero, eight is eight, 120 is 120. In the semantic size, we're giving them more descriptive names. Radius small is a size two. So selecting my element on the canvas again. In my radius, I've already applied one, but if I click the variable icon, I can change this to any of the radius that we set up inside this collection. Let me change it to radius small, and you can see that radius has now changed to be that two. On the auto layout settings, if I pop these open, I can add in my padding medium, which is the variable created in my collection, to the horizontal and to the vertical. So we've now got variables powering the radius, powering the padding and powering the background color. This is typically how we would work on components in our design system, where we have these variable collections that are then applied to our elements on the canvas. We'll go through this in way more detail as we start to create variables in the future, but here's an introduction to the three different types of variable in Figma. See you in the next video.